The Uyghurs are an interesting ethnic group with a fascinating past. They were once a part of the Gokturk Khaganate, which was the very first Turkic Khaganate. Nowadays, they primarily live in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region in China. The Uyghurs have a mixed ancestry, with some of their roots coming from the Gokturks, carriers of paternal haplogroups R, Q, and O, and from Iranic and Tokarian speakers, carrying haplogroups R, J, L, among many others, who lived in Turkestan before the Turks. In terms of their genetic makeup, the closest ancient population to the Uyghurs is the Karluks of Central Asia. In terms of modern ethnicities, the Uyghurs bear the most resemblance to the Hazaras of Afghanistan and the Nogays of Russia. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype traits, and GD match results of a medieval Uyghur from Mongolia. More medieval Uyghurs from Mongolia are going to come later. On my channel, you will see eventually every sample, as I've said multiple times before. Um, okay, this is her predicted phenotype with Manasha Kot. Dark brown eyes, Native American snub-shaped nose, and although Manasha Kot is not able to give her a... Um, eye color prediction, I mean a hair color prediction uh, that's less vague than just not having red hair, we can definitely tell from her genotypes in uh, Okatu and Herktu regions that she does not have blonde hair, guys. No blonde hair at all. Not even anything remotely similar. Uh, not anything that remotely resembles blonde hair. Uh, because look at her genotype in SLC 45A2, SLC um, 24A5. She doesn't even have any derived variants in SLC 24A5 that has to do with like skin color. So. Definitely not blonde, guys. Not blonde whatsoever. She doesn't have BH2, blue hepatite 2, or blue hepatite 4, or blue hepatite 3. Uh, once again, definitely not blonde. Once again, very dark eye color, as Maina Shakot very correctly predicted for her. Uh, Ysek, on the other hand, predicted her to be blonde and blue eyed. And let's take a minute to laugh at Ysek, laugh at their stupid predictions, at their absolutely. Um, absolutely deranged predictions they give for uh, samples with incomplete coverage. They are not able to give you an accurate prediction if your sample does not have complete, absolute coverage over all of the bases that they look for. Uh, and they are not able to impute genotype. So if you're not genotyped for the main variation in BEH2, guess what? YSEC is either going to depict you with sunglasses or it's going to predict you with blue eyes. That's that's the go-to uh, response from YSEC. If you don't have the main variation in BEH2, that you need for classification of eye color with YSEC, they're gonna give you sunglasses. My tool is actually able to look at nearby genotypes and do imputations and predict what your phenotype is, even if you don't have the complete coverage. That's why my tool is just so much better. That's why you should buy it for $7 from my store. Uh, okay, and the rant is over, and she also does have one derived variant in EZAR. So she's got semi East Eurasian traits, same semi, um, Maybe straighter hair, a little bit of epicanthic folds, a little bit of uh, shovel-shaped incisors, all the typical East Asian stuff. She has got the warrior genotype in Komt's Valmet variation, which, which simply means uh, val, val higher Komt enzygomatic activity, meaning uh, quicker dopamine reuptake, meaning less dopamine in the system, problems with attention and motivation. However, advantages in stress resiliency, hence the term warrior with the IO, in contrast to the warrior uh, with the IE, which is a more stereotypically European genotype. Here's the main EDAR variation, where she is heterozygous, meaning she has one of the East Asian alleles and one non-East Asian allele. Uh, this has to do once again with phenotypes, such, such uh, traits as shovel-shaped incisors, epicanthic folds. She does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, but of course, this doesn't necessarily mean she's lactose intolerant, it just means that she probably has some other mutations for lactose persistence that are not found in Europeans. There's actually an Arab mutation, but that code gen doesn't look for. There's a Chinese mutation. There's all kinds of lactose persistence mutations aside from the European one. And um, <coughs> she doesn't have the any of the variations that protect, any of the variants that protect against myopia. Uh, and she's uh, got a higher risk of myopia than uh, average person. Uh, now, when it comes to this genotype, it's, it's a pretty rare genotype, and fetuses with this genotype may cause maternal preeclampsia and high blood pressure, but not for themselves. Actually, they cause this uh, trait for their mothers. So, fetuses that carry this genotype uh, are more likely to ha uh, to cause problems during the pregnancy for their mothers, uh, which is a very interesting, very interesting. Um, dynamic to observe. So it's the mother that suffers for the fetus's genotype. Very interesting gen dynamic here once again. Uh, she's got this genotype which predisposes her to depression, panic, and uh, various um, maybe panic attacks or uh, stuff like that. It's it's a H2, HTR2A gene and this has to do with uh, serotonin transport. Now she's got this genotype 
uh, for lower dementia risk. A very interesting genotype to have, and it's pretty common. Uh, you can see 33.12% of CodeGen users have had this genotype as well. Uh, she's got this genotype, which is actually less common. Only 11% of CodeGen users have it, and it leads to better intracranial volume and 2% higher IQ um, compared to the uh, compared to the TT genotype. Very interesting stuff. If there is an intelligent, if there is an intelligent intelligence gene, this is one of them. Uh, this is one of the intelligence-related variations. <laughs> and she's also got this genotype, which uh, predisposes her to certain metabolic conditions such as obesity, coronary artery clogging, and you know various um, stuff that has to do with uh, high BMI and obesity and diabetes, all, all in that ballpark. Now here's her closest modern and ancient individuals, ancient groups with uh, G25. For the modern groups, she's most similar to Hazara and Uyghur, which are actually pretty similar to each other, even though they're like completely different in terms of um, ethnic history. Uh, they just happen to kind of resemble each other. And she also is uh, similar to Karluks and Karahanids uh, for, uh, for the ancient groups, which are actually Turkic groups in Central Asia. Her results with Eurogenes K13 are very interesting because here we can see really the merging of um, Indo, I mean not Indo, but just Iranic culture into the Turkic culture. The Turks sort of emerged out of uh, basically Siberians or very East Asian looking people m uh, mingling and conquering and spreading their language into areas where previously Indo-Iranian or I should say just Iranic uh, not not anything Indian, but uh, where previously Iranic individuals lived, such as, for example, Scythians or Sakas or uh, Sarmatians. So this individual is very much an assimilated uh, Iranian in terms of her ancestry. This is her result with MDLPK16, and you can see the uh, you can see the Siberian components, such as 21% Siberian, 20.1% Southeast Asian. These are kind of the original Turkic uh, Altaic components. But but on top of that, she's actually scoring a lot of uh, Iranian components as well, such as Caucasian, uh, Indian, Steppe, uh, Northeast European. Those are all Iranian components that she's scoring. And when you merge those two together, you get a result that's typical for Uyghurs from Xinjiang or Uyghurs from Uzbekistan. And she's actually getting mono as a mixture here from as a, as a mixture of Uyghur from Xinjiang plus Mari from the Republic of Mariel. Uh, fun fact about me: I'm actually from the Republic of Mariel. I was born there. Moving on to Harappa world, you see the components such as Baloch, Caucasian, Northeast European, Mediterranean, and South Indian to an extent as well are uh, sort of the Iranian components, Yaz culture components, you could say. Uh, and she's got around half of this Yaz culture ancestry, plus the other half is. Uh, later medieval Turkic expansion and various uh, Haganates and ve various uh, Turkic excursions into the Central Asia, right? And she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Uzbek plus Hejen or Uzbek plus Mongol. So she's more East Eurasian than what's typical for Uzbeks, um, but she is more West Eurasian than what's typical for Kyrgyz. Look at line number 19. It's Kyrgyz plus Turkmen, and Turkmen are almost are almost like Azerbaijanis. Turkmen are almost like Iranians and Azerbaijanis. They are almost uh, like West Asians. They just have like 20 or 25% East Eurasian admixture. So Kyrgyz plus Turkmen means she is more West Asian than Kyrgyz are. And Kyrgyz are very uh, East Eurasian in terms of ancestry. You can see this uh, with Pandian LK12 too. So very simple stuff. If you add up the European hunter gatherer, the Caucasus hunter gatherer, the Anatolian Neolithic, and the South Asian, those are all Iranic components that she's scoring. Those are all uh, evidences of her having Iranic admixture. And the rest, the East Asian, uh, the Siberian, that's all Turkic or Altaic admixture. So she's roughly half Altaic, pretty much, and the other half Iranic. She's getting modeled here as a mixture of Turkmen plus Tuvinian, so she is more East Asian than Turkmen are. Uh, but she is, it seems, less East Asian than Altaians because line number seven, Altaian plus North Ossetian. So she's um, somewhere between Turkmen and Altaians in terms of uh, East versus West Eurasian admixture. With the uh, ancient Eurasia K6, you can see she's around half East Asian and the other half is various West Eurasian groups, although you can argue that ancestral North Eurasians and ancestral South Eurasians are not entirely 
uh, not entirely West Eurasian groups because A and E and ASE they both have admixtures from the Tian Yuan man and they both have ultimately admixture from East Eurasians. Uh, she's closest to Uyghurs with the Oracle here and she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Uyghur plus Finnish or Uyghur plus Lithuanian or Uyghur, basically Uyghur plus a little bit of like uh, like five to seven percent of Northeast Europeans. When it comes to an Iron Age model for her genetics, it seems that the closest uh, model for her is a mixture of half Iranic, which is represented by Turkmenistan Iron Age, uh, TKMIA, and the other half seems to be Mongolic or or some kind of Altaic admixtures, Slab Grave, Xian Bay, uh, which are kind of, you know, Altaic admixtures. Is it Mongolic or is it Turkic? It's probably more Mongolic than Turkic, but it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they both are interchangeable with each other. Uh, when it comes to the Bronze Age model, uh, for the Bronze Age mo model, it's just kind of a mixture of... Well, you can see Parhai is um, BMAC. You can see there's Sintashta. So she's roughly half uh, Parhai plus Sintashta. And there is also a very exotic admixture here, which is Salhit Upper Paleolithic. For some reason, she's scoring 6% of an uh, Upper Paleolithic admixture from a, for a Bronze Age model. It's just very surprising. I wanted to include this here because it's a uh, surprising quirk about this file. Maybe it's because it's a pretty low quality file and that's why you see this kind of exotic admixture. Uh, for the medieval model, <coughs> for the medieval model she seems to be getting modeled as a mixture of mostly Xiongnu plus uh, medieval Turkics plus a little bit of East Asian. So Xiongnu are Turkic, right? So it's a mixture of Turkic plus Turkic plus a little bit of East Asian, which is also kind of similar to Turks. Uh, overall, very Turkic result. And finally, this is what she scores with Gidrosia K3. You can see a very balanced mixture of East Eurasian and West Eurasian, pretty much a perfect even split between East Eurasians and West Eurasians. Uh, now, thanks for watching until the end. You can download this genome in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.